they want it. There are a lot of King State College students I, I'm, that give me confidence in our future generation because I believe that a lot of them are, are here for the right reason. They have a community spirit and they're not just uh, looking out for themselves. But the real issue here isn't the pumpkin festival. It's, it's an issue regarding, um, it has become a societal problem, but in, in particular with Keene State, it's become a tradition to drink heavily to excess, one minute, um, to excess, and uh, it, it's sort of an unwritten code that that's what you do in the Pumpkin Festival. And I think in order to break that, we have to find solutions. And I gave the city council an example of a Department of Justice study on student party riots. It has 27 responses. Some of these can be crafted to fit our, our situation. Another, one suggestion I have as a possible solution is to, that Key State, it's within their power to rearrange the schedule so that, so that Keene State isn't in session during the Pumpkin Festival. It would only require, it's the same thing they do with the St. Patrick's Day. You ever wonder why St. Patrick's Day always occurs on a, on a break? It's because they've arranged their schedule so that people aren't drinking in excess at, during St. Patrick's Day. 15 or, seconds. Rather at uh, Keene State. So that's just one of the solutions. Uh, and I, I, I would look forward to the opportunity to discuss more solutions with the administration and the city council. Thank you. Thank you, John. <laughs> we'll we'll look for Daniel Flynn to work your way to the microphone and Chelsea. Hi, uh, Chelsea Ladderberg. You both tend to say that wrong. Um, good evening. I've come to you today not only as a festival volunteer, but also as a community community member and the wife of a uh, King State alumni. I am a Nebraska transplant only living in the shadow of Mount Manana for the last three years. However, I have quickly grown to love what is offered in this quaint corner of the state. Festivals are a big part of life in this region, especially in the city of Keene. Take a look at the walls of Acadies, participate in the leisure of the main street shopping experience, or visit the Keene website, and you will see nods to those types of, of events. New Hampshire is a live for your dive state, but I'm sure most community members would not permit the behaviors and experiences that happened on October 17th and 18th of this year. As issues are discussed this evening, I think it is important to focus on the main point, loss. Losing out on both valuable quality of life and the feelings of lost freedoms. Upon researching what quality of life means, I came across a publication titled Quality of Life, Its Definition and Measurement. An excerpt from the abstract of this publication reads as such. A model of quality life is proposed that integrates objective and subjective indicators, a broad range of life domains and individual values. It also allows for objective comparisons to be made between the situations of particular groups and what is normative. Considerable agreement exists that quality of life is multidimensional. Quality of life is much more complex than simply being healthy or having, having material items. It means to enjoy what life has to offer. This enjoyment is harnessed and prolonged by the community members with direct correlation to the time they share. So do these festivals have an impact on our quality of life? Would our quality of life diminish with the discarding of these types of events? One minute. I think many would agree that life in Keene, New Hampshire, wouldn't, just wouldn't be the same without community-driven events. A community driven by subjective thoughts and ideas cannot objectively plan for a prolific ending. Our society provides its members the right to ex exercise one's freedom in any manner one may choose, except when such acts may obstruct or prevent others from exercising their freedoms. Put oneself and other put oneself or others in danger or exceeds a constitutional limit. I fear we can easily define the events of those two days as an impediment of the community's freedoms. Displays such as the Keen Riots, so eloquently titled, 
are not unique to Keynes. Okay, I'm going to skip a lot. <laughs> um, a final thought. As issues that are, are raised and concern mounts, a key word sticks in my mind. Community. A group of people who have the same interests, a group linked by a common policy, a unified body of individuals. You can put any word in front or behind community, academic community, residential community, or even community member. But the running theme is community.
my fiance Kim and I were there this year, and around 7.30, we're walking the streets, not bumping into anybody, not elbow room. And we said, you know, this is one of the nicest pumpkin fests we've had. It wasn't until later, when Kevin appeared over at McHugh's, the responsible peer, um, that, that we heard what was going on. And I think that that says a lot of people, a lot of people that were there, it was a wonderful pumpkin fest. And as far as what you can do about this, I think you've taken the first step. Two years ago, or the pre previous pumpkin fest, I thought it would be a great idea. People with cameras and videotape were out there shooting people causing problems. And this year, that has turned out to be a very good force. Now, next year, remind them. Remind them that you're being videotaped. Encourage people to videotape. Offer rewards for videotape to people doing bad things. You know? Um, but don't kill the pumpkin fest over there. Some of those people don't like to stay home, and the rest of us come down and have a grand time. And uh, I think it's great. Thank you for doing this tonight. Will <laughs> somebody make a note? Daniel does not need a microphone. <laughs> <laughs>